The NFL draft is here. It it feels like it is nine years in the making. You know, if you're in this space, if you're in this industry, even if you're a fan, it feels like the NFL draft has become more of a spectacle and more popular than the actual season itself. The Super Bowl, like the numbers, it's fucking dummy numbers out here, the ratings on the NFL draft and just the amount of people that tune in and get excited for it. Uh, this is, I feel like this is one of the more exciting NFL drafts in a while because there's not a lot of consensus around the things that are going on except for Bryce Young at one. After one, it's like all hell is about to break loose. So I want to just jump on here and talk about 10 or so things that I am most looking forward to, intrigued by as it relates to the NFL draft, uh, more specifically to offensive position players and fantasy, of course. It is anybody's guess how this fucking thing is going to play out. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I, I use the Mojo app pretty damn often, and they have a really, really strong team of very, very smart people consistently updating their app, and, and their app is the Sports Stock Market, if you are unfamiliar with it. They are a partner of ours, but we are a very proud partner of theirs because they are really, really clean within their app and their data and their information and everything they got going on is amazing. And they have prices for every single player that is going to be drafted. So it's going to be fascinating to watch these prices fluctuate as the draft happens. And I highly suggest you go download the app and see how things play out in real time because they are basically pricing their players based on projected draft capital of the algorithms, the projections, the optimizers that they got going on within their office, which is very, very cool and way better than your favorite fantasy analysts numbers. I can promise you that. So we will keep an eye on these numbers really really in depth um go download the mojo app it is free to download if you're in new jersey you can actually bet on these players and win money like it's the stock market so i'm just going to kind of riff here in this video and talk about some of the storylines and the things that are evolving we know bryce young is going to go one to the carolina panthers anyone who thinks it's will levis is a fucking moron but after bryce young the burning question is like who's the second qb off the board if i had to bet a lot of money it would without a doubt be cj stroud because you look at levis you look at anthony richardson and they're much more project worthy than stroud who could step in and deliver accurate passes consistently right away but i guess the questions are you know does houston take a qb at two unlikely i think i saw lance Erline say that it won't be a quarterback it won't be cj stroud so does someone trade up to number two who is the second qb off the board who is the third qb off the board and i think the the question i'm most intrigued by or the answer i'm most intrigued by is at what point does the third quarterback go off the board. I think we've been so in tuned with or so hyped up for this draft for so long that we like kind of assume those four dudes are going to go off the board in the first seven or eight picks. Does one of them fall? Do we see Levis fall down to 15, 20, 25 or something like that? I think that could be crazy. If one of them does fall, do we see some team from you know, in the back 30 picks straight up for one of these QBs. And then going down the list, does Hendon Hooker sneak into the first round? He's coming from the ACL tailor, obviously. He's uh, he's an older prospect, and you're going to have to wait for him to get back onto the field and hope he's good at throwing the ball, obviously. Hooker can go anywhere from, I, I've seen my, like someone put out a mock draft yesterday that these dudes got to get their fucking YouTube channels taken away. Uh, it, it was actually like a, a big sports media dude, but he put out his, I think it was Chris Collinsworth, maybe. He had, uh, Hendon Hooker going to the Kansas City Chiefs at pick 30. Just like, what are we doing? The draft just needs to happen already. The draft needs to happen because these things are just getting fucking out of pocket. So my burning questions are, how far does the QB2 drop? How far does the QB3 drop? Who is the QB3? And when does Hendon Hooker go off the board? Does he, ma does he make it into the first round? I think there's a good chance he does. I think it would make a lot of sense if he also does not. I could see a situation where a team trades into the back end of the first round right like I don't know whether it's Seattle or Detroit like they don't take him obviously with their you know top 10 pick but then they see him sitting there at 23 25 29 whatever and then trade back into the first to get their guy like a Lamar Jackson type thing so uh that's really interesting the quarterback position is probably the most interesting position of the positions that are fantasy relevant for the draft this year moving on to the wide receiver position it's just not a great class it's a class that has a lot of specific players that can do specific things for teams I think what we probably know is JSN is the first wide receiver off the board likely will be a top 15 pick I think the Packers probably swap their pick so they can get him at 13 but you have Tennessee sitting there at 11 you have Houston at 12 no guarantee he gets there uh, if he somehow surpasses all those guys like New England at 15 makes a lot of sense and then the biggest question marks I have behind JSN is one who is the wide receiver two some team could be in love with Zay Flowers some team could love Jordan Addison so Jordan Addison's a dude who 
despite all of like the negative press, not negative press, but like yeah, negative vibes that he's gotten over the last you know few weeks, month or whatever since the NFL Combine. The thing with the NFL is it takes one team to not give a fuck about analytics and just be like, because Jordan Addison's a guy that you watch the film and you say, mm, this dude is a really good route runner. This dude is just a great wide receiver. So it takes one NFL executive, one NFL team to say, we don't really care about his athleticism. We don't care about analytics. We don't care about any of that stuff. We just saw a great route runner on film. And Jordan Addison's a dude that like, very, very hard to deny that part of his positive game, right? Very, very hard to watch his film and say, ah, I don't really like what I saw there. Uh, you could pick holes in other parts of his game. He's small, he's undersized, he's not as fast as you'd like him to be for that size, etc. But when you look at the film, it takes one guy. So is it Jordan Addison? Is it Quentin Johnson? Does, does some team think he's got crazy upside with the Zay Flowers? And if you look on the Mojo app, you have Jackson Smith and Jigba 1078 a share. So he's the clear number one. Jordan Addison, a buck sixty behind him. Jordan Addison at nine dollars and ten cents. And to give you some reference for other players around that share price, you have Jahan Dotson at twelve twenty seven. You have George Pickens at eleven fifty six. Traylon Burks at eleven oh eight. So even Traylon Burks would be the highest price receiver in this class. And I think it's probably because we don't have a guarantee of where these guys draft capital is. But when you look at their pricing, you're starting to see the tier shape ups. JSN, the clear one, Jordan Addison, pretty clearly the two at nine dollars and ten cents. Quentin Johnson and Zay Flowers are both eight dollars and sixty seven cents. Where they go in the draft, that could mean end of first round, that could mean the second round, that could mean day two. And then Jalen Hyatt, Josh Downs are pretty significantly below them, like $2 below them. So they're like the next tier of wide receivers. So I guess my two burning questions for the wide receiver positions are, who is the wide receiver to? And how many dudes go in the first round? I don't know what the over-under lines are right now in sports books, but if there's a sports book giving you uh, three wide receivers drafted in the first round, I'm going to take the under on that. Three and a half, for sure, absolutely, we're taking the under on that. I don't see a world where four wide receivers go in the first round. Two and a half, that's where thing. I think that's probably where the line is I think even on two and a half I would probably take the under I think we we very very likely see two wide receivers go off the board because there's not a lot of drafts even though you look back at like the Hollywood Brown draft I think he was the only first round wide receiver that went similar drafts um you'll start to see that pocket of you know year in and year out we always see like the Michael Pittmans the T Higgins like that early day two like the first few picks of day two we see a lot of these bigger uh, wide receivers go off the board and that's where I feel like a Quentin Johnson goes off the board a pick 33 or pick 35 or whatever and the other note is that because Miami forfeited their pick, this is just a tiny, tiny edge you might have in the betting market. Uh, because Miami does not have their first-round pick this year, it's only 31 first-round picks, which means you know you, you take a 30-second. What's it? What's a 30-second slice of a pie? Whatever it is, that percentage less of a chance of a first-round wide receiver, um, especially that part of the draft, because you see a lot of wide receivers go from picks to, to you know 20 to 32. So. I am really, really interested to see how many wide receivers go off. And then going over to the tight ends, like I'm interested to see if more wide receivers or tight ends go in the first round. Because I think based on everything we've heard throughout the draft process, Mayer and Kincaid are pretty much locks to be first round picks. I felt that way about Darnell Washington post combine because he just went absolutely fucking nuts. But most of the things, most of the vibes I've been getting over the last week or so have kind of pointed towards him being closer to a top 50 pick than a first round pick. But who fucking knows? Anything could happen, obviously. So I'm interested to see if more tight ends go in the first round than wide receivers go. I think there's a higher likelihood that two tight ends go in the first round than two wide receivers. But I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of the first round, we actually had you know, three wide receivers and two tight ends. Because I don't know if, you know, Laporta or Musgrave or uh, Darnell Washington sneaks into the first round. I'd be a little bit surprised at this point. But I think a lot of those guys do end up going like top 50, top 60 picks. So for the tight ends, uh, my questions are, which one goes one, obviously? Uh, I think it's more likely that Michael Mayer goes one. I think in like fantasy and everything, we want Kincaid to be one because he's a better pass catcher. But Mayer is probably more well-rounded. I think uh, the, the landing spots for tight ends this year are so fucking juicy, right? Like Dallas, Cincinnati, even with the Irv Smith signing, the Chargers. Like those are three of the teams and, and Green Bay that have like some of the the, the biggest needs at the tight end position that are in that range where tight ends are probably going to go. Those top two guys are probably going to go. They need the guys. Um, I could definitely see these two rookie tight ends landing in really, really juicy prime spots for, uh, for fantasy. So excited about the tight end position. Then we get to the running back position. Biggest question, of course, is where the fuck is Bijan going to go? Is he going to go top eight? Is he going to go 16? Is he going to go 20? 
but I think more so, Jameer Gibbs, does he sneak into the first round? I don't know. Something is telling me deep inside that he does. I think there's enough buzz around him. I think enough teams love this dude. And here's the other thing. Like, there's been rumors and reports that, like, yeah, there are teams that have Jameer Gibbs ranked above Bijan Robinson right now. One of the things I hate about the NFL draft process is like these rumors that come out like an NFL exec says this. Here's a, here's a problem with shit like that. With rumors that start with like the an NFL exec. We can't tell you who, but like an NFL exec for a team said this. Every team has like fucking 90 NFL execs. That's an exaggeration. I have no idea, but I think they all have probably anywhere from like 10 to 15 executives. And some of those dudes are horrible at scouting. Like a lot of those, you look at any of the bus picks that have ever happened over the last fucking 30 years. And guess what? An NFL exec made that pick. So I take that with a wild grain of salt. Anytime you see a rumor, it's like NFL exec. It's like, yeah, there's 10 NFL execs for every single team. Half of them are probably a terrible at scouting. Half of them probably don't know what the fuck they're doing. So they say these things and doesn't, there's no repercussions. There's no, you know, backsourcing to who they were so that they actually have to like atone for the bullshit that they're saying out there. Uh, so don't do, do not buy into these rumors that like, oh, there's all these NFL execs that have Jameer Gibbs over Bijan. It could be like one uh, interim scout for the Cincinnati Bengals saw Jameer Gibbs play in high school and he's the one like saying this shit. Needed to get that off my chest a little bit. I do think Gibbs can get into the first round, though. So really interested to see how high he goes. And then after that, I mean, th this, it's similar to – actually similar to, you know, wide receivers and quarterbacks. Who is the three? Likely Zach Charbonnet. But after him, I think anyone ranked from, like, four through ten can be interchangeable, right? Like, I see a lot of people that like Kendra Miller. He's my RB4, right? He's my RB4 in my pre-NFL draft rankings – which are available to you guys right now on bge.co. They will be updated in real time in our rookie draft guide throughout the NFL draft. I'm going to wake up bright and early Friday morning, make sure we revamp our rankings for you, and then Saturday morning, and then Sunday morning we're going to do the same thing. So if you have your rookie draft on Sunday, we'll have you ready for it within the rookie draft guide. So go to bdge.co and cop that shit. So I'm, I'm interested to see how many go in, in day one, but I'm also probably equally interested to see how many go in day two because I don't see I haven't seen really almost any mock drafts recently that have anyone besides Bijan and Jameer Gibbs going within the first two rounds once we get to round three things open up a little bit but not much and if we head over to the mojo app their rankings are Bijan Jameer Gibbs clearly ahead of everybody else Zach Charbonnet has cleared some space as the three then you have Devon A. Chain Tank Bigsby Izzy Abanacanda, Zach Evans, Kendra Miller, Sean Tucker. So any of those dudes could be anyone's RB4 all the way to RB10, all the way to RB12. So I, I, I'm I really interested to see how many day two running backs get picked. Because once we get into day three, that's obviously where the majority of them go. And the majority of those guys that are, you know, rounds four, five, six, seven, uphill battle to be fantasy relevant. So if we only get, you know, three running backs within the first two days, if we only get four running backs from the first two days, that makes rookie drafts really fucking ugly because I'm I don't really want to spend a mid second late second round pick on Tank Bigsby if he was a fifth round pick you know what I mean so guess ugly quickly but maybe NFL teams like these running backs more than we do I don't really know right now but this is gonna be a fun fucking draft those are my burning questions I do want to know what are you guys most looking forward to as it relates to the NFL draft as it relates to dynasty fantasy football these skill position rookie players what are you chowing down on the popcorn for what are you lubing up for pause after you drop that comment make sure you hit the thumbs up button subscribe to the channel if you are new most importantly go download the mojo app go to the app store actually just click the link down below it'll take you right to the app store mojo available on ios available on android it is basically your own personal dynasty rookie rankings i don't want to shit on myself because we're also selling a product that has them but if you want theirs you got theirs if you want ours you got ours on bdg.co mojo app free to download Go grab it. NFL Draft tonight. Let's fucking go!